Hello, what have we here? Welcome to Cloud City Council. I have been waiting for you. Where our host Rob, John, and Alan talk all things Star Wars. Wipe them out. All of them. From the comic shop to the silver screen. <laughs> and here I thought we were friends. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? The force is strong with this one. Hello and welcome to Cloud City Council. My name is John and my co-host here with me as always is Alan. Hey, what's up? And this week we have a special guest, Austin. What's up, everybody? So it's double A's against me. Um... <laughs> As, don't you feel special? Yeah, exactly. So this week we actually Rob is away. He's on holiday. That individual. Uh, I hope he's enjoying himself. Uh, I'm sure he is. It sounded like fun what he was talking about. So, but he just couldn't be here. He's disappointed he wasn't here. But you know, it is what it is. It just happened to be that we scheduled this live broadcast at the same time. So <clears throat> this week is a little different than normal because this is our live stream fundraiser. And uh, we'll be putting this podcast out next week. But uh, for now, um, we wanted to do something a little different. So what we'll do is we'll quickly zip through the news, and then we'll play our little game that I've got set up for these two guys, which is a bit of a trivia contest. And uh, so let's start off with they announced, I guess it was the, no, it wasn't the 501st. It was the Mandalorian Mercs announced that they are going to be wearing purple ribbons at the opening of Force Awakens uh, to mark for Daniel, who passed away after being able to see The Force Awakens. Um, so they're actually still going to mark his passing and the fact that he was a Star Wars fan by wearing his favorite color. So they're going to have little little purple ribbons. I thought that was really cool. That is? Yeah. I, I think it's awesome. Well, I think that whole thing for Daniel was fantastic. So I think I think it's great. So Yeah, congratulations to everybody on that. I think there's so many people that should be given credit for doing... A great thing for for him and and i'm sure he appreciated it quite a bit and so this is definitely one of those things where i love our fan base and not is our there, personal fan base but the star wars fan base is there some kind of like initiative for everybody to do that like are they trying to i think basically they they started out doing it on their own i suspect what we'll find out is everybody will probably do it but i think initially it was just something they were doing but i think uh, jedi news got a hold of it and put it up so. Well, and I do, I do like what Star Wars is doing right now. They're they're out there supporting charitable causes themselves as as a whole. Anyway, StarWars.com because mm. um, they've been posting out those free. You have an opportunity, I guess, if you donate, you have an opportunity to win different things and stuff like that. And I can't remember. Do you remember what that was? What it was called, John? It was started with an O, and I it, can't remember it's the name of Force it. Force for Change, I think, is what they called. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah, it's like omaze.com or something. I can't mm -hmm. remember. But yeah, but yeah, I I think it's fantastic that the Star Wars community comes together and does things for people. This is this is it, this is what it's all about in the end as much as we love our movies. The fact that we can go out like we're doing today with uh, you know, with the Children's Miracle Network. The the fact that we can do things for other people, that's the best part about it. Yeah, absolutely. I really love that aspect of it. I think that's really jazzed me for this whole thing and and it, you know, there are lots of other groups that do a lot of great things. So I'm not, I'm not specifically pointing out to Star Wars fans, but, but I think it's interesting to kind of see how often it seems to happen with that fan base, and and especially with the 501st and the Mercs and the Rebels. I think they do an awesome job at raising money for charity. Absolutely. So yeah, okay. So here's my first question for you guys, that I would like your comment on, um, and I guess we'll start with Austin since he's the guest. What do okay. we? What do you expect or want from the Force Awakens? Um, what would Austin need to see in order to say, "Yep, I'm good. I went and saw that." Uh, lightsaber battles, I like them, mm -hmm. but um, I I don't know. I want to see what they've been doing, oh, like the whole time since the uh, episode six. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to I want to find out what the old characters have been doing. I want to see. They they need to have a good story for Finn. I think if he's gonna like start like I don't know as much as you guys, but if he's gonna be like the new Jedi and the new main character for these three movies, uh, I want him to drag me in. As long as he has a good story, I think I'm gonna be okay. Him and Ray. Yeah. Alan. Um. 
you know, I want, I want good story. I want mythology. I want, I want everything we've had with the six films, the prequels included. There was a lot of great storyline. There was a lot of mythology. There were a lot of things that went into thought when, when they, when they wrote those stories. That's what I want out of this. Sure. I'm excited about the action scenes and you know what? Nothing gets me excited, more excited than watching, you know, the X-Wing fight, uh, fighters do their thing, watching, uh, you know, Han or whoever it is that flies the Falcon and, and even watching the lightsaber battles. But in the end, I really want to be able to connect with the story, which is something that I, I, I was able to do with all six films to this point. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's my biggest thing is I, I don't want a film that feels disconnected from the other six. Agreed. I want to feel like the films are just as much a part of the 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 pattern that Lucas set up as anything else that we've seen. And I would be highly disappointed if it isn't, but I'm not expecting that. So I'm not going in there expecting us not to be entertained and not to enjoy ourselves. And I think we've been able to appreciate a lot of things that they've done. And so I, I'm I, I'm hopeful. You, you know what else I want. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say this because I've enjoyed seeing Finn wield a lightsaber in the different trailers that we've seen. Yep. But um, if you know, I, I might be jumping out on a ledge here, but I want to see Ray with a lightsaber mm-hmm. in her hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to see. I want to see her popping into the scene, wielding a lightsaber and and doing a little bit with it. Now, whether we see that or not. I don't know. I'm hoping that she's she is the Jedi. She's the Force sensitive Jedi, the Skywalker, whatever it might be. I I really am because I like her and I'm a big fan of hers and I'm rooting for her in this entire saga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm excited for her her journey. Um, she from the trailers and such, you get that feeling like she's the Han Solo Han Solo type character. Um, but yeah, I kind of agree with you. I think she's probably going to be a Skywalker or Solo type. And that would suggest force sensitivity, but no idea. So right, I want. I'd like to see them, like whoever is the force sensitive one, if not both of them, build their own lightsabers. Yeah, that'd be that'd cool. Be cool. That's something other than in the Clone Wars uh, television series we've never actually seen. And the deleted scene from Return of the yeah, Jedi that, that popped was a in different than the way they presented it in. It was Clone Wars, but that doesn't and, mean anything. And we didn't see much of that deleted scene. We really only saw as he's putting the last parts and pieces together of the lightsaber. So we didn't really mm-hmm. see him put the crystal in or anything like that. So, yeah, yeah it, it is a little bit different than what we saw in the Clone Wars. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Austin. That's not I, – I wouldn't mind seeing that either. No, 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 no. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I'm not saying I wouldn't. My biggest thing is I want to see more than five minutes of Luke in that movie, but I have a sneaking suspicion we might not. You yeah. and me both. But we'll see. Okay. So, moving on, because I think the little quiz is going to take a little bit. Uh, Finally, and I don't know that, that Austin, you've done this, so this, I'm just asking general impressions. So, Alan, have you read Vader down yet? I am. I'm caught up. I've read uh, all three issues to this point. Okay. What's your general impression so far? I love it. Yeah. I really love it. As much as I loved the Vader comic series when it first started, Mm -hmm. I want to say that with Vader down, they've taken the next level up, taken a step up. Um, and the opening issue was just incredible um, from from everything, from the way that Vader took on two squadrons in space to the way that he and, – and destroyed him, mind, mind you, to the way he crash landed because Luke – you know, because of Luke, um, ended up on the planet and then takes on an entire – you know, what – Full squadron, two squadrons of yeah, of soldiers on <laughs> on the land, and took them all out. It's like it's vintage Vader, yeah. folks. If you're not reading this, you should because it's vintage Vader. It's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's been really good. I've I've enjoyed it. I'm I'm caught up as you are, and and yeah, it's been great. Those two comics have been good and getting better. And this particular crossover has worked a lot for me, which I wasn't sure about when they initially said it. Uh, but it's been really cool, and I like the interaction between Afra and Luke, and especially the the protocol droid, the assassin protocol droid. Oh yes, I think he's he he was hilarious in that last comic book. 
with him. Yes, he was. Hands cut off. <laughs> well, he gets his heart. He gets his arm he gets ripped off by a Chewie. One cut off. That's what it was. Yeah, and he yells at Chewie, and and what is it with you guys and and yeah. dismembering people? Yeah. <laughs> and then and then Luke takes his other arm, and then Luke stabs him, and he still has the 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 wherewithal to come out with mm -hmm. the other droid. Yep. And and BT I believe is the other droid's name, yeah. and come out and and try and take over. Yeah, <laughs> it was. I'm like, do you die or what? <laughs> I know it's crazy. It, it makes you appreciate why they were locked away with their chips out. Um, but yeah, they're great characters. I love them. So it, it's fun to watch that Afra for the first time seem like a real bad guy, which was interesting because up until now I've sort of seen her sort of a tweener. Yeah. And in this last comic, she actually came across as a bad guy, which which I think is good. I think she needs to be. Actually, her she... character development development has gotten really good, not with just with Vader down, but I want to say the previous two Vader comics, yeah. the previous two issues, because you got a chance to see when she was almost killed by Vader, how yes. uh, manipulative almost that she could be in such a way to save her own skin. Mm -hmm. and then And now here she is kind of handling things on her own in the most recent issue and I thought she did it very well and and I've I've enjoyed her development as a character. Yes, absolutely. I think they've done a really good job of developing a character we don't know about and making her somebody that we actually have interest in and actually do care about, which I think is I think it's a an awesome development. I really like the series. I would recommend everybody reading it because it is well worth it. So I, I want to ask you a question real quick, and I know you want to get into this trivia thing, but do you believe in any way that the planet that they've landed on has any sort of significance for any reason? I don't have any clue. <laughs> well, it has a Jedi <laughs> temple on it. That much. Yes, it does. That much we do know. So it does have some, some reason for it. But beyond that, I don't know. I'm assuming there must be at the end of the day, but they haven't. They've been so vague about what it is and what it isn't that I think most of us don't really know yet. Right. Um, but I'm pretty excited to kind of see how it goes. Uh, it's just been intriguing to me to see the different Jedi temples pop up in the in the recent um, platforms of media that we have, whether it be Rebels, whether it be even back in Clone Wars, but now through the comics and um, in, in different series of comics, Shattered Empire – and and even with the most recent books, you know, where we read Weapon of a Jedi, you're seeing different Jedi Temple satellite locations around the galaxy popping up that we didn't know about and, and weren't even alluded to previous, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And I, I there's so much that they're giving us now in depth with everything. It's just – it's been so great. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this all develops. Me too. All right, guys. So with that, I think we'll end the normal portion of our show <clears throat> because, of course, Austin's having trouble necessarily knowing what we're talking about. Um, so uh, let's... What? You mean we have Austin now who is taking – literally taking the place of Robert <laughs> and is not caught up on the comics like we are? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Robert, want to I say got that. you. Make you proud. <laughs> <laughs> we're, always giving, we're always giving Robert a hard time about not being caught up, whether it be comics or the Rebel series. <laughs> You're fitting right in, Austin. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, I'm almost guys. caught up on Clone Wars. Yeah, yep. yeah. He's at least ahead of Robert on that. Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So here we go. We have the Star Wars Trivia Challenge for the members on the stream who are watching this currently on Twitch TV. Uh, you will actually be able to follow along, and you can take your guesses along with our two gentlemen here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask one of you to answer the question. If they can't answer, the next one can, so that it's fair. Basically. And you're going to find out just how much of a Jedi I truly am not. Oh, <laughs> ouch. All right, here we go. So you ready? Yes. Let's, let's do it. Okay, in the clone. Okay, this is for Austin. In the Clone Wars television series, uh -huh, oh, what is Anakin's nickname in the first season? Sky Guy. Yay! He got it. <laughs> well played. All right. So, to Alan, what was the name of the actor who played Anakin Skywalker in Return of the Jedi? Uh, in Return of the Jedi. Yep. Ooh. Um. Oh my gosh. 
You threw a loop at me. That's not fair. <laughs> and, and I'm I'm picturing. Oh, I'm picturing of Latin descent, but I'm not thinking of the name. And I could be totally off on that. Yep. I am totally off yep, on that. You are. It's not David Prowse because he was Darth Vader. So we're talking about Anakin and he was, well, are, okay, special edition or original? Original. <laughs> oh, nice try. Nice not try. fair. No, the original uh -huh. guy was in the special edition too, to be fair. That's true. He was. I, I'm going to have to pass because I'm not going to get this right. All I'm right, gonna Austin, you got slaughter. it? Hayden Christensen. No. I don't know. I just... Sebastian Shaw. Sebastian Strong. See, I don't know why I thought Latin either. That was ridiculous. Maybe it was because of Sebastian. I'm horrible. Could have been. Could have been. Okay. All right, everybody, that, everybody that's listening, you can slaughter me on Twitter. Do whatever you want. <laughs> that was just I, I'm, I'm going to hide my face in shame now on that one. Isn't, isn't Sebastian Shaw an X-Men? Mm, different guy. Hmm. Uh, okay, so others. Okay, this is back for Austin again. It's, it's not Sebastian Shaw. Um, there is a Sebastian, but I don't think it's Shaw. Anyway, uh, other than C three PO and R two D two, can you name three droids from all six <laughs> films? Oh man, no. I want to say that I cannot. Let me think. You don't that have been in, have that have been the... in all six or just three droids. No, 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 no. Three droids from all six films. So in, not in all the six films, but over all the films, can you name three droids who aren't? Uh, can, does General Grievous count? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. Would he count, Alan? He's half machine, half man. He's more <laughs> of a cyborg. I, I don't. Say. I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to give it to him, but. Uh... <laughs> I, I yeah I don't know because I'm I'm trying to think through my mind if I can think of even the number. Okay. Uh, super battle droid, destroyer droid, battle droid. Yeah, close enough. All right, sure, we'll give that to you. We'll give <laughs> that to you. This is rigged, I tell you, rigged. <laughs> well, I was thinking more along the lines of R four. I was gonna even drop IG eighty eight. Yeah, IG eighty eight. <laughs> there's no one. All right, Alan. What was the original Japanese movie that was one of the inspirations for Star Wars A New Hope? Bonus points. Can you name the director? <laughs> Why, are you Why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah. All these easy questions. You give me the tough one. I'm telling you, it's rigged. <laughs> He's throwing fireballs at you, Alan. I didn't have anything to do with this. I, I want to say it was a samurai film. Uh huh. But I don't remember the name, nor do I remember the director. Austin? Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. No. Oh, no. No. <laughs> not even close. It's Japanese, first of all, not Chinese. Uh. All right. So if you guys give up, it is uh, The Hidden Fortress, and the director's name is Akira Kurosawa. If this ever gets back to Brian Young, he'll kick my butt because he always writes about these things in StarWars.com, and I read them religiously. All right. So here's one <laughs> for failed. Austin he's not going to get. <laughs> what film was George Lucas supposed to direct before Star Wars? He actually created the first story treatment, but did not have a chance to do it because of financial reasons for the producer. Uh, Jurassic Park. Nice try. <laughs> uh, Alan? <laughs> Is this the one that eventually made it to the screen? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's American Graffiti. Nope. No, nope. I'm thinking of that one. No, because because I just watched the documentary American yeah, Graffiti. Yeah, he made took, wow, that one. Out. This is one that he actually didn't actually have anything to do with in the end, other than to write the first story treatment. You got a different guess? No. Apocalypse Now. Yeah, I wouldn't have got that. All right. I wouldn't have got that. Although, props to Austin for just guessing names. That's just pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alan. Oh, you guys, one for how many? Or two for how many? Uh, in the original movies, when R2-D2 was moving on three legs, what did that mean functionally? Not as in, like, from the actual story mode, but what did it actually mean for what was going on for behind the scenes? Well, he had to have a character in him. Yeah. Yeah, but when was there a character in them and when wasn't there? Um, in other words, when was Kenny Baker R2-D2 and when wasn't he? Oh, gosh, I just watched the documentary the other day about this. They used him specifically on um, uh, when they – when he had to go up and down steps and things like that, they had to use him. If it was on flat surfaces, it was always wheels. Yep. 
That's true. And so, if he was talking to somebody, I don't know if that's true. And, you know, well, it, Kenny Baker did a lot of things in there because uh, R2-D2's head movement was a result of Kenny Baker as well. Right. So, But um, when but he's it, on three wheels, he is what? Rolling. He is R- He's an RC. Yeah. He is not actually Kenny Baker. That's it. Anybody listening, I'm blaming the questionnaire here. <laughs> He's throwing stuff here. This is not fair. All right, Austin. Austin. What? True or what? false? True. C-3PO was taken apart or exposed in three movies. True. Bonus. Can you name them? Um. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, an- <laughs> okay. I know Phantom Menace. He was exposed. His head was taken off in Clone Wars. Oh, that was four times. And we're not talking. We're not talking. Oh yeah, Attack of the Clones. You mean Attack of the Clones? Yeah. I, I just realized I got it wrong, guys. It is four times. Yep, it's four times. Well, yeah. it's still true. He is taken apart in three, three movies. Three movies, yeah, but it's actually four movies he gets taken apart in. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one. Um, I know it's from. It's from like the original saga. It's uh. Because, oh, uh, 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 Empire Strikes Back because Chewbacca wears a well backpack. Good job. Well done. Okay. Woo-hoo. What's the other one? But the other one was, um, it was on the Millennium Falcon and I want to say it was, I don't think it was New Hope, was it? I think yep. it was, Return- yeah, it was New Hope. But he it was, wasn't on the Millennium was- Falcon, it was when he fell off the thing after the sand people attacked Luke and he broke his arm. Is that when it was? Yep. That's the one I forgot. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, because Phantom Menace, he didn't have any parts on. He didn't have skill nope. rings. Uh, Attack of the Clones, he was his head was taken off and put on a on a battle droid. And it was such a drag. Yeah, oh, God. And then, <laughs> and then in uh, in New Hope, he lost an arm, and in Ret- Empire Strikes Back, he was blown to pieces. And by the way, yes, that was funny. Don't give me that courtesy laugh. <laughs> it was a drag. All right, here we go, Alan. <laughs> what was the name of the first ever expanded universe book written for Star Wars? Hi, John. Why did you give him these? No, no, no. I, you know, he what, he does, this. what he doesn't realize, I know this because I own the book, actually. Good. I, 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 may have, I may have read it so long ago. Well, hold on, because I'm going to go look through my pictures. I just took a picture of it recently. <laughs> <laughs> it was, oh, man. I'm trying to think if it was one of the Neil Smith um, books or uh, not. I'll give you this. It was written by Alan Dean Foster. There you go. So it was the Alan Dean Foster book, and it was um, – hold on. I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. Oh, crap. What did I do with it? It's. I got a picture of it right here. I got a picture of it. They're saying that was a bad pun. It was Splinter of the Mind's Eye. You are wasn't correct. It? Yeah. See, I have that book, and I'm looking. I'm looking at it right now. It's pretty worn, but yes, yeah, Splinter of a Mind's Eye. Yeah. Now for the bonus, do you know the original reason for the story being written? Um, trying to gather it from even looking at the cover, but the cover's not giving nah, me much to I Won't tell you anything. I. You know what? It's been so long. I That's mean, we're, okay. talking, we're talking over 35 years, so and I don't know. When we recorded Cloud City uh, a few months back, we actually reviewed this particular comic series. And it turned out when I was looking it up, it, it's because when George Lucas was creating Empire Strikes Back, he was worried that the uh, studio wouldn't give him enough money to actually film what he wanted. So they had them write this little story where it was just Darth Vader, Princess Leia, and Luke Skywalker called Splinter in a Mind's Eye. Nice. So that was going to be Star Wars 2. Wow. There you go. Yep. A little bit of trivia. All right. So back to Austin. Why is Star Wars A New Hope still property of Fox when all the other movies are properties of Lucasfilms? Hmm. Gosh. Uh, how, I honestly do not know. I'm trying to take a guess here. I'm going to guess because there's some somehow they're separate properties. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> there's a very specific reason. Um, uh, I don't know. Okay, Alan. 
I want to say it has to do with the original contract. Mm-hmm. It does. But... Because, because Lucas signed the original contract for it, and then after signing it before it was filmed, he uh, suddenly realized he did not want to lose his creative rights to the additional uh, movies. And, and so then he reworked a, the contract, but I think part of the contract included not, that, not getting the full rights to that one. That is more or less correct. The only addition yeah. to that is, is that Lucas actually got the merchandising. Yes. Which is and that's, how he funded Empire. And that's how he got the contract reworded, too, yep. was he told them. And, and back then, Fox didn't care. Nobody nope. cared because, Nobody because back then, well, and 3.75 action figures just didn't exist back then until yep. Lucas started working with Kenner. So, yep. yeah. So, there you go. Good job. All right. Moving on. Okay. So, was that? No, that was. Okay. So, Alan. Yes, other, sir. Other than, this goes back to something you should know the answer to. Other than Boba Fett, what were the names of at least two other bounty hunters on the Exeter during Empire Strikes Back? IG-88 and Bosk. That was pretty easy. Mm. Yes, it okay, was. I got Bosk, but not the other one. The other ones. I, I had to look I, up some of them because I was like, who is that guy? <laughs> IG-88 the other one that's easy for me to remember because mm. he was the only droid amongst them, I believe. Yes, he was. Yep. Cool. Good job. All right, Austin, can you name the five planets Anakin visits in the prequels? Ooh. Um, Naboo. Mm -hmm. Tatooine. Yep. Geonosis. Yep. Coruscant. Yep. And I, I, if I had enough time, I could remember this one. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Him and, I'll give you a hint. Obi-Wan fight. Yeah, that's the one. And it's a, it starts with an M. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, even better. You're really close. It's such a far way away. Oh, that <laughs> was... Lucifer. There you go. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. Okay. Those are the bit. only planets he visits, really? Yep. That's the only planets he visits in prequels. I actually was thinking about it. Hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, can you... Okay, Alan... Can you name the only main character we have not seen in the advertising, be it toys, trailers, or posters, mentioned in The Force Awakens? You finally give me an easy one. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Luke Skywalker. Nope. No, wait! Did you say mentioned? You said mentioned. Yep. In the toys, trailers, or posters. C-3PO. Nope. He's in the poster. Wait a minute, I'm thinking then. Tag oh. me in. You're you're thinking no, the wrong side. No, no, you're of the not light. tagging. <laughs> I'm seeing it on them. I'm on the wrong side, huh? Yep. Uh, Captain Phasma. No, of course we've seen her in all the trailers. Oh, no, yes, we have. So uh, why? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Tag me in. <laughs> Does voice count too? Uh oh. Hmm. No, because we haven't uh, seen them. But we've heard. Yeah. I haven't you're, seen them. Then I'm going Snoke. Yep. But we've heard him. Yep, but we have never seen him. Okay. At all. See, I, see, this is that's that's what happens when I don't listen to the question in the first place, and I give you five answers because none of them qualified because I didn't listen to the question. Yep. So, bonus. Can you name the actor? <laughs> yes, Andy Serkis. Thank you. Easy one get, for you. I was thinking the original movies, like who's from the original movies, and I didn't, I didn't listen to the question either. No, nope, main bad guy. It's only the main <laughs> bad guy, but we've not seen a thing about him. All right, so, Austin, in the script as written during the climactic scene between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, what <laughs> is the line that David Prowse, the actor who played Darth Vader in person, said to Mark Hamill? I don't, I've heard now, this. Now, hold oh, on. Oh, oh, hold oh, on. Oh, oh. I got it. I, it's multiple choice even for you. Can I just say it without you answering? I see sure. the multiple choice. It's Obi-Wan killed your father. Oh, he got number C. Good job. Wow. <laughs> Good job. Because it's A was I am your father, I killed your mother, Obi Wan killed your father, the Emperor killed your father. <laughs> nice job. Okay, Alan. What country oh this is the, here, here, now you get an easy one. What country was the real world location for Hoth? Oh And if you don't get this, oh boy. <laughs> You're fired. No. <laughs> I'm gonna be fired then. I'm gonna say Greenland, but <laughs> You're wrong. Yeah, see, I knew it. Austin? <laughs> Huh? Do you know the answer? Um, Siberia. Norway. <laughs> See, Siberia. and we're supposed to know. Okay, in my defense, I, Austin didn't know it either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, here we go. According to Carrie Fisher, what what was she and Harrison Ford doing the night before filming their first scenes on Bespin? Would you like me to read the multiple choice, Austin? Uh, yeah. Was she A, sleeping, B, at a rock concert, C, visiting with the Queen, or D, partying with the Rolling Stones? Uh, partying with the Rolling Stones. You are correct. Yeah! Yeah! In that fact, was a guess. They were partying so hard that she said they were still a bit drunk when they started the filming. <laughs> That's why Han says I know. Yeah. Oh. He's, supposed, he's supposed to say I love you, you just didn't remember. Oh, That's, Carrie Fisher. There might be some truth to that, actually. <laughs> All right. So, Alan, what was the name of the creature that fought Chewbacca for C-3PO's head in Empire Strikes Back? The name? Not his personal name. What was the what was that? creature called this isn't fair because i don't remember i'm picturing him i know what he looks like he's playing he, he's sitting there playing uh football with him no it's not football keep, keep away. away yeah keep away playing mm -hmm. keep away with mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. he's got fangs if i remember correctly yes yep looks like oh, a boar good heavens you can shoot yourself I know I'm going to shoot myself because I should know this, because I can picture him, but I can't think of the name. All right. Austin? Uh, if I saw a picture, I might be able to, but I can't remember. Okay. On that basis, I'm going to tell you, it's an Ugnaught. Oh, when I got that. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay. Here's a tricky one, I hope. Unlike the rest of them. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Austin, what was the first line said by C-3PO after being repaired on Cloud City? Oh my, I'm terribly sorry to intrude. B, stormtroopers here were in danger. Oh no, I've been shot. C, I'm backwards, you filthy furball. Or D, how rude. How rude. That's your answer? Now nah, I don't want it to be. Okay. Shall I turn it over to Alan? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Alan. B. Close. It's A. Was it A? Yep. He says, oh, my. I'm terribly sorry to intrude. Don't get up. And then he'd get shot. Oh, <laughs> uh, see, you split it up into A and B together. Yeah. Yep. You turkey. Because they actually are separate <laughs> quotes, actually. <laughs> well, he turns a, B, him on. He turns action. him on. He says that. Then he turns him off. And then he turns and, him on again later. And that's when he said, stormtroopers here, we're in danger. And A, B, and C are actually in correct order of how they appear in the movie, too. You're yeah, just exactly. a turkey. I don't like you right now. <laughs> this is just wrong, John. <laughs> All right, Alan. According yes? to the new canon, what is Emperor Palpatine's first name? Sheev. Very good. All right, Austin. Yeah. What Star Wars prop appeared he that I made this just for you? Appeared in Star Trek, the J.J. Abrams 2009 movie. What? Nothing. Because that's blasphemy and it would never happen. See, I do but it did that. happen. <laughs> um, hyperdrive. Alan? I should know this, too, because I just said that it did happen because it <laughs> did happen. And I've seen the dang picture. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't remember. It, no, wait. It is, uh, it's a pair of clothing. Nope. No, it's not the clothing. Nope. Because I keep thinking it was the clothing. Yeah, it's R2-D2. What? Yep. Somebody, <laughs> somebody <laughs> charge. <laughs> it's because when there's an explosion and there's a bunch of rubble, R2-D2 is one of the rubble. What did he do that for? <laughs> that's wrong. How rude. <laughs> How rude. All that's, right. that's one of those deep in line Easter eggs. Now I got to go back and watch Star Trek. Yeah. Does that mean uh, that Star Trek is canon in Star Wars? I doubt it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, guys. All I right. Think it's the same universe here. Alan, according to the published reports, how much money has The Force Awakened made in ticket sales so far? Oh, crap. Um, we I wanted to. about this on the show. Yes, we have, and it was in the teens. I thought it was 14 or 16. Not even close. It's even more? Mm -hmm. Was it in the teens? Mm -mm. It was more. I'm giving you hints. That's terrible. Yes, you have. Because we have talked about it. Mm 
Like last time, in fact, I think. Yeah, but that was a month ago. You're supposed it was two to expect... weeks ago, Alan. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, it was two weeks ago. You expect me to remember two weeks ago? <laughs> uh, it's in the hundreds, then. Mm, nope, too high. Too okay, high. Austin. Um, thirty-eight billion. That was a good guess, but way too high. It's fifty <laughs> million so far. Well, where where am I? <laughs> Is this so glad to the council? I don't know why I just guessed in the billions for tickets. I don't know because we've never had a movie make over two billion ever. So yeah. All right, guys. Well, guess what? You've made it through. Hooray! <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> now you got to talk about ribs and i got to run. Oh, man. So that was a lot of fun for me. <laughs> for you and probably for the listeners who are laughing at us. And, 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 and like I said, any of them who know me are going to come back and be, dude, you suck, man. What was that? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you know. Can't John gave all, you right? literally the hardest questions in the world. They were Thank you. At least somebody recognized that. Dude, I wrote these questions from memory. I just want to make that clear. Oh, so they're tainted. Yep, that's right. <laughs> you know, if I wasn't in such a hurry, I would have brought up online and I'd have been Googling everything <laughs> you said. Yeah, well, you don't get that option. Disney owns uh, Star Wars now. Good job. <laughs> Whoever the rights were, it doesn't matter. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, actually, they do not own Star Wars, the original movie. The, hey, you Google Hope. it. Uh, it's still foxes in perpetuity Although, Although for not much longer, I believe. Uh, nope. That's only Empire and Return of the Jedi. Okay. They have Star Wars, A New Hope in perpetuity. So the only way that... Disney can distribute it, much like they did this last year with the Blu-rays, is they actually had to get Fox's permission. And it still has the Fox labeling on it. So, basically, I think what will end up happening is at some point those two will negotiate as to getting all of it. But, for now, that's what they've got. Yeah. So, yeah. Nope, I got... I'm almost done with Clone Wars. I'm halfway through Season 5. And if you ask John, I wasn't even on season five yet last night. So, John, I don't know how much time you have, but I, and I don't know how much time you have, Austin, but I want to hear. What do you think so far? Um, it surprised me because you see like this, this um, kind of pixar animation, mm -hmm. and you think that it's going to be a little kid show where they teach you lessons and stuff like that. And while it has those elements, it, it surpassed where I thought it was going to be because I thought – they weren't going to kill anybody, and they literally kill somebody, like, every episode. Yep. yep. Like, and I don't know. You just get, like, the sense of darkness. Like, I just watched one of the episodes where um, I think his name is Hondo or Hondu. Yep. Yeah, Hondo and Where he goes um, and tries to take kyber crystals from younglings, and he was ruthless with the, about the younglings. He didn't even care. And it's just, like, th it's darker – than I thought it was going to be, so I enjoy it way more than I thought it was going to. Yeah. What is your What's your favorite season or story arcs or episodes to this point? Um, there was where uh, Rex was. They were on that um, the dark planet, um, Umbra, Umbar, yes. Umbar. Yep. Yep. And they had with, that. You talking about Krell with yeah. Krell? Yeah. Dude, that, that was, whole arc series was good. Yeah, that was one of my favorite parts. Cause I I liked I like knowing like some of the behind the scenes stuff from the movies, like how the clones, how yeah. like Rex is slowly coming away from being a mindless clone, and right. I I love that. Yeah, no, and and that that particular story arc was at the end of my favorite season. Season three was my favorite. I yeah. Actually, no, that was the start of four. Season three was my favorite because I loved the Mortis arc where Anakin mm. and uh, right. Obi-Wan and, and Ahsoka all ended up going into the... The father that, and son and daughter. Yeah, seeing the father, son, and, and, and daughter. And it was the dark side versus the light side and oh, balance. Yeah. And that was my favorite, favorite one. Um, second only, you know, the, the second one in, to me was that season was the, uh, the arcs of the Night Sisters. I love mm -hmm. the Night Sisters. Mm. Yeah, that was, so, that was cool too. 
Yeah, Those I, are my favorite story arcs of all of of the entire you know of of seasons one through five. Since my, Austin's not actually done them, I, I I can't really bring up much, but I'll just say that the last five episodes of season five or four episodes, yep, and then pretty much the first three or four of the Lost Missions and the last four of the Lost Missions are some of my favorites in the whole thing. Austin Lost Missions, that that season six, as they call it, will mm -hmm. blow your mind. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. For that it. one, you you think the stories are good right now? That one just opens it up to so much. It yeah. will blow you away. Yeah, and you're introduced to a lot of things that you're personally really interested in. So I think it's I think it's cool. I have to say that my favorite overarching thing throughout the whole the whole show is Ahsoka, mm -hmm. like. Seeing her grow from like a naive kind of little padawan, padawan where everything's good to learning under Anakin and all these other Jedi and she's becoming like more grayish and like she lives in between both sides of the force. Funny and, that he says grayish, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but we won't go into that because that's spoilers. Nope. nope. <laughs> you, all I'm going to say is you're on the right path with your thinking. Rebels is, Rebels is awesome, dude. When you get to Rebels, you're going to see a lot more. You'll enjoy it. I can't wait. I hope they come up with a comic of Ahsoka. I will, I will, I'll be on for that. Yeah, I'd be interested actually to find out some more with her. And so would I. And I, I think they will, but right now they're focused on a lot of other things. So, but we'll get there. They announced and they released some of Anakin and Obi Wan this week, which mm. looks intriguing. Um, yep. So. Yeah. And I heard, I heard for those who enjoy comics. My comic store told me that there's a super comic coming out this week of Star Wars. Oh, right. Okay. I don't know if you understand what the super ones mean, but... Is that the, like, jumbo size ones? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like There's supposed to, to be... Star Wars is releasing one this week with... And, and I asked my buddy, who's a big comic guy, really? he's a comic geek, and he said it's going to have all sorts of stuff in it that you won't see... That, that you don't see in the other series. So it's like brand new stuff coming out this week. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it'll be fun. Anyway, boys, I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, I appreciate you both coming on. I appreciate the fact that I embarrassed you both and enjoyed that tremendously. <laughs> um, and Austin I will, will be this. back with us soon. So when we have our next regular recording after The Force Awakens, Austin is one of our invitees for that roundtable. I will remember this. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome to embarrass me anytime you want. Uh, Austin does it quite often. And uh, yeah, so... I guess that's it from us from now. Uh, if you want to find out more about what we're doing, uh, if you're not already on Twitch, you can check us out at twitch.tv forward slash distractions media. Uh, you'll be able to follow me on at the Nerdstitute. And where can they find you, Alan? Uh, you can find me all across the board at Jedi Zog. Uh, find me on Twitter, Facebook. It's all Jedi Zog. All right. And Austin? You guys can find me at the Pack Pod. All right, cool, guys, and uh, please tune in, please donate. Thank you so much on the stream for, for watching and uh, and guessing along with our, our, our two professional panelists here, and uh, we will see you all next time. May the Force be with you. Bye-bye, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Lucasfilms Limited or by the Disney Corporation. This podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. This has been a Distractions Media production. For more info, you can check out everything we do at distractionsmedia.com.